It's just recording. It's just setting up. Okay, great. All right. So hello, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Sean, uh, and I'm going to be making some art here. I'm a television host on Sprout, uh, as you all know, and, uh, and also an artist. And so uh, I have this new uh, thing that I'm trying to do here on Mom TV, which is uh, do these art demonstrations. Uh, and so in the past, I've drawn things that, um, uh, like an object, uh, we, I think I painted a teddy bear, uh, and then, uh, but, uh, and some flowers. But today, the game plan is, is to uh, just draw and paint something from my imagination. I'm going to use some pencil here. And uh, I also have some watercolors. So these are my, this is my watercolor tray, just a cool plastic tray. And you get these cool tubes that you can squeeze all these very expensive different colors out of. So these are artist quality watercolors. And um, yeah, I'm gonna use this stuff. And, um, and today I was thinking I'm going to paint a tree. So Stephanie, uh, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, same with you, Tom and Heather and, uh, and anybody else. And if there are other folks here, um, uh, please feel free to log in, uh, chat, say hello, let me know you're here. Uh, so we can interact while I do this because, uh, uh, yeah, it's more fun when we, when we chat while we do it. So, like I said, I was thinking I'm going to, to do some sort of tree. So I'm just going to sort of sketch in um, some things. And it might be a little hard for you guys to see. So you can see that. And maybe I'll, I'll make the lines a little darker. Uh, and whenever I, whenever I draw something without any sort of reference material, you know, I'm just sort of imagining in my head uh, maybe what this this thing looks like, and uh, and sort of trying to trying to trace it in my mind's eye. Uh, but uh, as I'm tracing in my mind's eye, I'm also sometimes just letting my hand sort of bounce around and do whatever whatever sort of feels right. I think I've drawn enough trees that it's become a bit instinctual for me in some places. So there, there's my tree outline. I'm ready to paint. So uh, uh, I don't need too much more uh, for me to start to get painted. So I've got a glass of water here. Uh, this is watercolor. Uh, so I just do a little, I can't really see that from here. Uh, get my brush wet, and then I'm gonna just start to lay in some, some rough details here. So this, I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown for the bark. And I'm going to imagine that there's a bright uh, uh, sort of sunlight casting from this side. So all the light is going to be on this side of my image here. So, here I'll, so I'm just putting a little brown on some of the branches here and there. And you know it's different than when you learn how to make a tree in grade school. Uh, the thing that I'm teaching in grade school you're drawing a tree is the light. So think about the shadows and where the highlights are. And for me, as I'm doing this now, I'm just I'm just sort of letting the brush sort of go places. I'm not I'm not being too picky about where the paint goes because I'm just laying in sort of a rough feel. But heck, there's a branch here and here, maybe there and there. And the thing is, is the reason I'm doing some branches as little spots is because you know, when you look at a tree, you can't see all the branches. They're hidden by clusters of leaves. Another key when you're, when you're doing any kind of painting like this is, um, is to focus on using different colors. So instead of just using the same brown there, you got a little bit, little bit of green here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a little red here because when you see bark on a tree, it's never all one color brown. It's got lots of different colors in it. Okay. You guys see that okay? Yeah. That's all right. In here. So I'm putting different colors of brown there. I think now I'm going to put in some of the leaves here. And um, I find the best way to work in this case is to work from light to dark. So I'm going to put in some real bright green. And I'm blocking in big patches of it because. Um, uh, like I said, I'm going to come back with darker colors to hit up all the little pieces, the little leaves here and there. And this is the same thing where I'm going to use different shades of green as I work around the paper. Uh, more green here, more yellow there. 
move around there. I don't know if you guys can really see the subtle variations in some of the leaves there. Um, but that's the great thing about painting watercolor is um, it's really easy to blend lots of different shades together. Um, you just dip into uh, into different little little uh, wells here. I've got uh, all these different greens here. I've got uh, this like dark, it's called viridian green, uh, sap green, green green, uh, lots of different greens. So I try and use them all as I make these these leaves. And then I can just even use water and connect the pieces too, to sort of blend them. Now, it, it turns out painting a tree to look more lifelike and expressive is actually sort of complicated. But I'm going to see if I can pare it down, no pun intended, uh, uh, to, to, a real, to, to make some real basic kind of decisions here so that you guys can sort of see it. Yeah, for me. So um, I think I need some more leaves, up, or, or excuse me, leaves on branches up in the tree. I think there's probably another thicker branch there. Let's say it splits here. That's another thing to start doing. Once you put in those um, those different clusters of greens, I can start to put branches in places between those leaves just to give it a little more body. Uh, Good. That's coming along. So sometimes there's a, some, some branches that stick out beyond the leaves too. They lost their leaves. So good. I'm putting this stuff in here. And the real exciting part for me when I'm painting something like this will be then when I get a chance to do the background. In art school, what we call the negative space. Um, but yeah, when I get to put in the sky around it, that's going to make all these leaves really pop. Let's see. So I want to connect all these pieces together like so. Yeah. By the way, are there any um, are there any questions? Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie says it's beautiful. I appreciate that. Compliments will go a long way with me. <laughs> um, good. Okay, so I've got this sort of rough tree shape sketched in. It doesn't have a whole lot of detail to it at this point. Um, I think a lot of times bark um, can be really sort of yellow. Adding some yellow down here, as if there's sort of sunlight bouncing off of it, like that. Uh, and then now is when I would, uh, you know, Tom asks, are trees like this easy to draw for kids? I mean, I think so. Uh, you know, as I was saying, trees being sort of complicated it depends on what level of complication you want to get to. You know, I think that's why kids draw trees all the time because. Um, they are easy and they're all around us, you know, uh, and they're just beautiful to look at. So, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's fairly, fairly simple to lay out a tree like this, sort of paint what you see. You know, a lot of times I think, you know, for young kids, it starts out with this sort of green cloud shape with a brown stick coming out of the bottom, but um, it adds a lot if you put these little branches up inside there, these little broken pieces that you kind of see sticking through. Um, that's like level two uh, from from level one of trees. Uh, let's see now. I'm going to I'm going to put in. I guess we'll put in a blue sky. Oh no. So I'm going to use a much wider brush now uh, because the thing about watercolor is it dries almost immediately when it hits the paper. So. Uh, I need a larger brush to get more paint all over the paper so it doesn't look too streaky. Uh, you know, because the sky in most cases is such a, an even color, even color of blue. But what I've also discovered here on my tray is I have a lot of black. 
flying around, and so the black is muddying up all my colors. I'm going to use this little one to just transfer some blue here. That's what these little mixing areas are for. You sort of wet, wet the watercolor up there and then bring it down here. So you can get a nice, thick, wet, um, I guess sort of paste of paint. Cool. And now I can use a larger brush to dip into that. And so I can just put this all around the edge and so hmm, I think I need more blue. This is when it helps to have pre-mixed, which I didn't do. Um, some of my colors here, be, uh, for especially for a show like this, where I've limited to time. Excuse me, time. Um, stay lovey. And so I'm just painting in that blue sky all around it. And it's okay if it overlaps with my leaves here and there. Just gonna add to the sort of depth and texture of it all. It doesn't have to be perfect to do something like this. Like just there, I got a little bit of the green in my sky, but that's all right. Now, in a case like this too, it's also a great idea when you're painting a sky to try and use two blues um, so that the blue from one side to the other side transitions. Because so I, uh, I was saying when you use two different colors and you blend them together, it sort of creates this maybe sense of depth. But we'll just assume the sky on this side is a little darker than it is over there. And now I need to um, put some of that blue in some of the pockets of the tree here. Create the illusion that the sky is all around it. Just like so. Yeah. And now uh, that's sort of a rough sketch of you know how to lay the tree and like that. And then I'd like to give it a home. So I'm gonna give it um a little piece of earth here that it can sort of live on. A serene kind of orange field. Now I imagine that the um, the the area underneath it is more orange uh, because of the leaves that have fallen there over the years. You know, they create that kind of mulch around themselves. Just naturally, the tree is, is undisturbed. Might have more of that. More of that brownish orange all around it. And uh, then I can also add some green as though there's grass here. And you see how watercolors, it's just so easy to, to put lots of color in quickly. I had never really used this medium. It was very intimidating to me when I was younger, but really like it now. Uh, so let's see, let's add some depth up here in the leaves. You can add some like dark bluish green. And now I'm using like a really fine tip brush to kind of just come and add Lots of dark leaves to the shadow, shadow by the other leaves. I'm doing that same thing again where I use two or three different types of green, different clusters, which adds depth. And the tree's starting to really uh, 
we come together. I think I'm even going to add a little bit of almost blackish gray to the tree here, or to the trunk. To, uh, to start to create those shadows. Now I can see on uh, the screen here, it looks a little faint. So I'm going to go darker than I normally would. Yeah, here we go. Now I'm shadowing those, those branches, which is really going to make it seem a lot more like there's sunlight coming from this side. See how quickly that happens when I put in the dark line? It really starts to feel like maybe there's sunlight coming from this way. And it'll happen even more if I do this down here and drag a shadow this way. Yeah. And now if I come and I do the same thing. Thanks, Michelle. Um, I, if I come and do a little more of that up here, really also going to create the illusion. If I do it up here, I keep adding dark shadows more to this one side. It's going to start to feel like that the sunlight coming this way. You can make the sunlight come in any direction you like. But I think that's the key to, uh, uh, to level three of making art um, is, uh, is then thinking about the direction of the light. And once you commit to one direction of the light, you just you keep doing it that way. You keep making all the shadows in that one direction. It's really going to start to make it feel like it's more three-dimensional. You don't need it to be too three-dimensional. You just want, just want to give the feel of a direction of light. So sometimes it's easier for me to, by the way, to look at the screen to look at the art, um, because I like to step back from my artwork. And right now, I can't get too far back, but uh, I can I can get as as far back as you guys are when I just sort of look at the screen. Um, but I see Michelle, can I make some birds in the tree? Oh, Michelle, well, of course I can. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can. I'm just being silly. And I have a sneaking suspicion that my wife and son are watching this show uh, on the laptop somewhere else uh, in the house because I keep hearing my son through the walls talking about me. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Let me find a little home for some birds. Sure. Um, kind of small birds, though, aren't they? Because the tree uh, is also sort of small. By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm now feeling like I need to come back and add a little more shadow here. And I'm doing it with a larger brush. It breaks up some of those lines and softens some of the detail. Uh, cool. How am I doing on time here? Um, I may have mentioned once before, for some reason, the clock on my computer um, is 12 minutes off, which is unusual. No matter what I do, I can't seem to get it to, uh, to go to the right time. Uh, so sometimes I don't know how long I've been doing this, my demo for, but I know now. I'm at 19 minutes. So we have another 11 minutes to work with here. So what I'm doing is just putting a little more shadowing, and then I want to find a place to put those birds, I think. I think we're getting pretty close there, though. Tree. So the birds. Hmm. Um, Tom uh, offers a good idea. Some birds flying in the sky might might be nice. Um, yeah. The birds in the sky. 
Um, sometimes you guys might notice too, and I just want to share. Um, I've talked about looking um, at the artwork through the screen because I'm a little further away. Typically, if I'm in the studio, I really like step back. I like to be able to step back at least five or six, even 10 feet back from piece of artwork. And then what I'll do is my face will go like this. And it's because I'm squinting. So when you squint uh, like this and you sort of just blur things in your eyes, you lose the details of what you're drawing because sometimes it's easy to get focused on the details. So it's easy when you squint at something, you can sort of see it as a whole, the gestalt. Uh, if you remember that word from, uh, what was that? High school psych class. Um, so uh, it's good to squint when you're making art. Pull back, squint. Oh, okay, I see the hole, uh, and then uh, and then come back and uh, add what you need to after that. Like after doing this, I now after squinting some more, I think I want to add some more branches here. Little details. Okay, so birds. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to see. I'm imagining they would be sort of orangish brown in the distance. Maybe we've got a whole you know, clock. Just a little. You guys see those? Little birds in the distance. Um, yeah, you know, it might be hard for me to really be able to, because it's such a uh, a big tree on a little piece of paper. Putting some birds that you can see on your screen in there is gonna be a little trickier. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Add some more. At this point, the birds are so small flying to the tree that uh, they're almost just little dashes, little squiggles. Um, but I like the idea of, you know, when they just occupy a tree, <laughs> they, you know, especially this time of year, you walk by a tree. It sounds like there's a party going on inside. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make this one of those trees. It's definitely a bird party going on in this tree. They're always changing places, just a couple hopping from this branch to that. You know, they all have a big conversation about who knows what, mating, food. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, in the past, you know, when I get ideas like this, which were your ideas, thank you, uh, and I'll do these kinds of things, I'll hate it at the end. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be like, I shouldn't have added the birds. Uh, and then it's, uh, you know, it's time to do it over again. Um, but that's, uh, that's all part of the learning process. Uh, cool. We're starting to. Let me get there. So, uh, any other thoughts, things that you guys would like to see? Um, um, I've got about about five minutes left, um, so I can continue to add little birds and little details. But I wanted to see if you guys had any other thoughts on. Is, it, is there a question or something that you feel like? You know, this painting's really missing this or that. Well, one thing I think I'd like to do, I'd like to, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'd like to darken up that sky, I think. Or I should say darken, saturate it. Jeez, guys, apparently I need to put this thing down because it's, you know what's happened is the water has caused the paper to buckle. So what happened then is that the, um, the paper doesn't want to sit evenly anymore. Oh, 
Good. And then you guys got to watch it fall on my head twice, which uh, may or may not have been entertaining. Um, how about a tire swing? Love that. I like that idea, Michelle. So a tire swing. It does look like a tire swing kind of tree. So, yeah, I think. You know, and at this distance, I'm imagining a rope would just sort of look shadowed and, and dark. I'm trying to decide where I want to put it. I think I want to put it. Uh, oh, and my wife tells me Everest thinks I should add a rocket ship. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to add that tire swing here. I need that line angled a little bit because I'd even like to see the tire swing swinging a little bit. Maybe it's blowing the wind. Maybe somebody's actually swinging. So I think I'm going to need to get down here off my seat. And a little block. Some more blocks. And maybe. And this is where things were to get, would get a little bit tricky. It would be for me to add, let's see. See if I can add someone actually swinging it. Uh, so I just, what I did there was um, did a very light uh, sketch of the body that I could then come back and add details, but not um, be committed to some dark lines. So I just added just a little bit of a gray. And so can you start to see some legs there? I just need to add a head. <laughs> And so once you put the little body in there, it starts to become quite a big tree, doesn't it? Um, yeah. I'm going to change something and put an arm out so it really looks like this person is swinging there. Um, just like that. Um, okay. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Uh, I really appreciate all of you joining me today, and thanks for your great suggestions, uh, birds and uh, added tire swing. Uh, and so um, uh, this is uh, the stuff that I love to do all the time. I love to you know, paint pictures like this, work from my imagination. Um, uh, I welcome you to come visit my website, seanroacharts.com, if you haven't already. Uh, and check out a bunch of the work I do there. A lot of it's from uh, from life that I work from an object or from a person I do a portrait. Um, but uh, a lot of it is also like this, where I just work in my imagination. So uh, once again, thanks everybody. Uh, I know um, many of you already know this, and just want to remind you I have a new app, Sean Draws, uh, which you can learn all about at runwildstudios.com, uh, and you can also find that at iTunes at the uh, App Store. So uh, thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, and uh, I'll see you in a few more weeks. Uh, I'm doing these every two weeks, but I won't be able to do the next one in two weeks because I'll be in Florida. Um, so uh, thanks, and uh, thanks, Michelle. I am doing comedy sports tonight, uh, my improv group, uh, so thank you. Uh, uh, and thank you, Stephanie, and thanks, Michelle, and Tom, and, and everybody. So thank you for joining. Uh, it's, a lot, it's been a lot of fun, and I, I'll keep you all updated on Facebook and uh, Twitter uh, when the next show is going to happen. Uh, and please email me um, or Facebook me a suggestion of what you'd like to see me paint uh, next time. Uh, thanks, everybody. Sayonara. See you.